Forging, often deemed as the worst skill in Skyblock. Although being present since the game's inception, it has received virtually no updates, has a very annoying gameplay loop, and is by far the slowest skill to max, even though it only goes up to 50. But despite that, I have over 30 million EXP over Forging 50, and in my opinion, it's actually worth doing right now. But why? As we all know, Forging hasn't really changed much since the introduction of the Legendary Monkey Pad. As someone who's been grinding Forging 50 for a while, and got Forging 50 before the Legendary Monkey even existed, I can tell you that Forging has not changed for a really long time. Until now. Before you get your hopes up though, it was not something to do with the admins. Of course, it was something that the players discovered that made Forging much easier. The reason it's so much better has to do with this new side to side forging method which you can see in the background. I didn't invent this so I'll leave a link down in the description to the person who actually invented it and a tutorial on how to build this exact farm. But this new farm can generate up to 900,000 XP an hour with a fully max setup. That alone already makes forging way better to do. But I'm not going to make a video where I basically just talk about somebody else's idea. So that's why I decided to do some of my own testing. So for this video, I tried out four different methods of farming to see which one is the best and which one I would recommend to you guys. But as well to find out which one gives the absolute most money per hour while foraging. Wait, before we get into it, please consider using code MATCH in the Hypixel store for 5% off. So if you want to help me in any way, just use my code whenever buying something out from the store. So that's all I wanted to say, so let's get straight into it now. So before we go into the results of the test, let me lay out the constants. For each test, I use a recombed tutorial tree cap with two flawless citron gemstones, a blue but green abbey phone case for some foraging wisdom, and I was taming 59 which does matter. Each test was also done using the island forging method if it wasn't already clear. The first test I did was the traditional side to side dark oak forging session with the pet swap from a level 100 legendary monkey to an epic ocelot. The only slight difference there was was that this epic ocelot wasn't level 100. Since all these tests are focused on making money, I decided to always attempt to level up a pet in order to increase my profits. In this case, it was an epic ocelot. I also had another separate epic ocelot pet during each test with an EXP share since unlike most people think, it doesn't actually hinder the amount of EXP your main pet receives. It's basically just pure passive income. This first test resulted in a profit of 5.8 million coins per hour and 780k forging XP an hour, assuming you grinded until you level up 5 epic ocelots. 4 directly through being the pet you swap to, and 1 through the EXP share. That was decent, but for the next test I decided to try it on jungle wood, as jungle wood is easily the most expensive wood in the game. The only issue with that though, is that due to how jungle trees grow, I had to slightly modify the design of the farm to work with them. So stay tuned for later because then I'll show you how I modified it. So for the first test using jungle, I decided to straight grind jungle wood with legendary monkey I'm leveling up and no pet swapping. Assuming you grinded till you had 3 max legendary monkeys and 1 max epic ocelot from the exp share, you would make roughly 7.9 million coins per hour but only 690k foraging xp an hour. That's a huge improvement but I wondered if I could make even more. So for the next test I decided to see if I could. Instead of not pet swapping, I decided to go back to pet swapping but this time from a max legendary monkey to a different unmaxed legendary monkey that I was leveling up. The idea is that I get most of the benefit from the max legendary monkey while having most of the XP actually going to the non maxed one. Doing this resulted in 7.5 million coins per hour but only 650k forging EXP per hour. So in other words, it didn't work at all. My main guess as to why this was the case has to do with the fact that pet swapping kinda lowers how fast you can forage. So even though I may have had a lower cooldown, I didn't really see much of the benefit as I had to wait a bit while pet swapping. Now for the final test. On the final test, I decided to go back to the traditional method that I used for the first test, but literally just changed from dark oak to jungle. 
and to my surprise this was by far the best method I tried. Assuming you leveled up 5 epic ocelots just like the first test, you would make 7.6 million coins per hour and 780,000 forging exp per hour. While it doesn't make the 7.9 million coins per hour that the no pet swap legendary monkey does, it sacrifices that extra 300,000 coins per hour for 780,000 foraging exp, which is well worth it in my book. This means if you were starting from foraging 1 and grinded all the way until foraging 50 using this method, you would make a grand total of 542 million coins. With jungle being so clearly superior to dark oak, you're probably wondering why more people don't do this. Well, I think I can come up with a couple of reasons. First of all, the dark oak farm is way cleaner than the jungle farm. Due to how jungle trees grow, it's not possible to have an automatic item dropper using repeater. So instead we have to use a pressure plate which is kinda jankier. This leads to issues where you either don't have enough saplings or sometimes have way too many. Other than that though, there really isn't any other reason to be using dark oak over jungle. So let me go and show you how to make it for yourself. Okay, so building this is quite simple. First, find an area to build and then hit F3 and make sure that you're facing north. You can see this right under the chunk section. Once you got that done, it's very simple. All you have to do is place two blocks. They can literally be anything. Then you want to place your droppers just like this. Now, once you place your 10 droppers, then you just place two blocks over here. Uh, then two blocks over here and then you can delete these ones then on these blocks you want to place one pressure plate and then you want to fill the rest of these droppers all with redstone so make sure every single one has redstone on it once you're done that all you have to do is set up the hoppers so now let's put one hopper in each uh dropper so one connected there since i already connected one there you don't have to connect it here but you can so like that Okay, so now you have all your droppers done. All you have to do is add chests. So I like to have these two at the front be for my bone meal. So for these to be um, my front, I'm gonna keep make one double chest for those. And then the rest of them, uh, I'll just make single chests or double. It, it, it really doesn't matter, it can be whatever you want. Okay, once you have all, all of your chests set up like I do, you can set up in so many different ways, but this is just like the dumb way I decided to do it for now. You just have to add two blocks over here. Then you want to add a temporary blocks over here and then another temporary block over here. Then you want to take lemons and place or basically any head block and then place them right over here. And then you can remove those temporary blocks. And now all you have to do is fill up your thing and it should work. So now that you've done that and they're all filled up, all you have to do is sit yourself uh, over here. Then uh, what I like to do, if you're going to be grinding this a lot, what I like to do is go to F3. Make sure that your uh, direction that you're facing is either 180 or 0. It depends on uh, where you're looking on an island. So right here it's 180 uh, to get a perfectly straight angle and make sure you're angled at a block. And then once you do that, just do slash uh, set spawn and it will set your spawn right over here. And then all you have to do is pretty simple. Place two blocks, move to the left or right, place another two and then enchant bone meal. And then you can just repeat this. And every time you hit the thing, it's going to refill your thing and uh, you're going to be good. So that's going to be it for the video. I'm going to be uploading more soon, hopefully. And uh, I'll see you guys later.